Big, big game in Baton Rouge. Maybe a playoff elimination game between Ole Miss and LSU. All right, let's talk about Jackson Dart going to play the Bayou Bengals. Now, he had about as good a game as a quarterback can have against LSU last year in Oxford. He was 26-39 for 389 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 10 yards per attempt. He was lighting it up. Ari, it's essentially the same personnel on LSU's defense this year. Do we think Jackson Dart has this kind of game in him again? Yeah, I mean, I think the whole story of this game is whether or not Ole Miss is going to score 40 points, right? Like, I mean, that everyone's on high alert for uh, how much better is LSU's defense, uh, how much better is Ole Miss's offense, because they did get better in the offseason from a personnel standpoint. Now, there's two important injuries that we have to you know, make note of here, Andy. One, Harold Perkins is not playing in this game or any other game for the rest of the year, and he was one of the most dynamic, explosive defensive players, not just on LSU's team, but in the country. And then we're unsure, as we're recording this on Wednesday, uh, October 9th, whether Trey Harris is going to play, which is the Ole Miss's star receiver. Um, but then again, We'll find out more as, as the week goes on. But we're going to prepare for this as if he's not because that's the way that Ole Miss seems to be going about it. Trey Harris has 52 receptions mm -hmm. in six games. 52! That's insane. But yes, Juice Wells, Caden Lee, Jordan Watkins, Caden Prescore in the tight end. Those are the guys that would be on the receiving end of, of Jackson Dart's passes if Trey Harris is not playing. So let's talk about the prize picks numbers for Jackson Dart. If you're not playing prize picks already, best daily fantasy game in America, download the app, use the code staples, and you will get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's how you sign up. That's how you play. The way you play is you pick in squares. Uh, you'll have a player. That player will have a, a, a statistical number attached to them. You decide if you they're going to do more than that or less than that. You pick at least two squares. The more squares you pick, the higher the potential payout. In this particular game, for Jackson Dart, the passing yardage number is 289.5. Ari, if LSU is going to win this, or if, if LSU is going to win this game, it's got to be less than. If Ole Miss is going to win this game, I, I, I'm pretty sure it has to be more than. Yeah, no question. And, you know, I love what... Ole Miss has been able to do on the ground, um, but this team is going to live and die by the numbers that Jackson Dart pulls, uh, puts up. And they have a lot of options. Now, granted, not having Trey Harris in the game, a person who has been such a target monster is going to be an adjustment for them, right? Like that is a, a factor that you have to consider if he doesn't play. Um, but yes, Jackson Dart has plenty of weapons and Ole Miss put together a team in the offseason to... Um, compete for an SEC championship because they're supposed to be able to score 40 in games like this. This is what this team is built to do. Um, and Jackson Dart has shown uh, multiple times in his career um, that he's able to do that. So against South Carolina, Ole Miss probably South Carolina, probably a little more talented defense than LSU's, but Ole Miss was, was had such a big lead. They were limiting South Carolina so much on the other side of the ball that they didn't really need to put up big numbers to win that game. Uh, and, and you saw Jackson Dart threw for 285 yards. There's only 24 more than he threw for in the loss to Kentucky, where Ole Miss was not moving the ball well at all. I think they're going to move the ball better on LSU's defense, but I also think they're going to have to because LSU's offense with Garrett Nussmeyer on the other side is going to be able to put up some points. So I don't know about you. This feels more like a shootout to me. This feels like, you know, Jackson Dart, you're, you're, 289 and a half, uh, your touchdown numbers. I feel like those are, are, are pretty good numbers to look at. The, the more than feels good on these because I don't necessarily have a ton of faith in LSU's defense to slow these guys down. Uh, the Goblin number for touchdowns for Jackson Dart is one and a half, which means they think he's going to throw for at least two because that's the easier one to get. The Demon one is two and a half. So if you think he's going to throw for three touchdowns, which I think is a distinct possibility in this game, that demon square does increase the potential payout. So this is one that, that you know, again, they'll, they'll go to Henry Parrish on the ground if they get close, but LSU has been capable of giving up big plays. You saw that against USC earlier this season. You saw that early in the South Carolina game before Lenora Sellers got hurt and LSU made the comeback. 
I think Jackson Dart could have a big one here. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I've been on the Ole Miss side of things uh, all week. I think that Ole Miss is going to win this game, uh, and I think they're going to win it comfortably, and they're going to get there because Jackson Dart is going to light it up in the air. We'll find out Saturday night in Death Valley.